want to then I want to introduce you a little bit. Is that okay? Oh, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I think we project the the prayers on the screen, perhaps uh, mostly in English, but I, I think we're going to try to sing seven uh, uh, line prayer to Guru Shane Mixma uh, afterwards in uh, Tibetan, of course. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know who who our Umze is. Who's that? Do we have that? <laughs> I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy to yeah. do it. I I thought that somebody else had already been selected, but I'll do yeah, it. Yeah. So I think I think I think Dirk, like you, you have like um, uh, maybe lifetime Umze. <laughs> 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 okay, I'll present also then. Okay, good. Would you help me with a seven line prayer? Yeah. <laughs> Oops, I'm sorry, I have the wrong one. <laughs> Yatsen Chogi no Prute Kama June Shesu Tara Kordu Kandra Man Puto Keki Jesu Dadu Jinji Lao Chi Sek Tu So Guru Pama Sudhi Mm. <laughs> Now praises. Yeah. No, we're not done yet. There we go. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you, Lama. Sorry about the prayers. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Okay. I've got some blocking my screen. Teacher. Photo destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, photo destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, do you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, photo destroyer, thus gone, Fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened to Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, 
Shakyamuni to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Pardon me, my mouth's very dry. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who are wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three, ever devout homage. To all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies, as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action, Accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning and clouds, look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to the merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dhamma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and the mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginning this time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen, and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my yidams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Yidam guru ratna mandala kam yati yami. The heart of the perfection of Wisdom Sutra, Arya Bhagavati Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus said I here at one time, the Bhagavan was dwelling on massive vultures mountain, on Rajagriha, together with a great community of monks, 
and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya Valokiteshvara, looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya Valokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Valokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shalabhati Putra. Shaliputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage, who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom, should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly, beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness. Without characteristics, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to and including no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on and up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly, completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth, since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared, Tayata gate gate paragate parasam gate buddhi soha. Tayata gate gate paragate. Tayata gate gate paragate parasam gate buddhi soha. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Arya Valokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharadvati Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Arya Valakateshvara, those surrounding in their entirety along with the world of gods, humans, Ashuras, and Gandharvas, 
overjoyed and highly praised that's spoken by the Bhagavan. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, can everyone hear me in uh, Google land? Hope so. Okay. Uh, some of you uh, who uh, came on early uh, had a chance to speak with uh, Kenshin Rimshe. Um, he's joining us from uh, the East Bay, uh, and he's uh, practicing good science as we are, staying healthy. Uh, I'm very interested in uh, him staying healthy and us too. Uh, when uh, it's time to, um, after vaccine or when uh, uh, COVID gets under control, I'm, I'm hoping he can visit in person. It's a real honor to have you uh, here today, Rinpoche, thank you. Uh, he's uh, our teacher and friend, uh, uh, gave uh, the first um, empowerment ceremony at uh, Lion's Roar when uh, we were uh, in the Alta Arden area at the Gladstone House, we call it. So uh, we've come a long way in the last seven years. Now we have a uh, formal temple, Dona Darge, and uh, Several years ago, he came to do uh, Medicine Buddha. Uh, so I'm just delighted he's uh, with us. Um, and um, uh, I'm, I put an advertisement, going to talk about uh, the fundamentals today. Uh, so uh, like view meditation, action, and uh, conduct. But um, I thought since uh, Rinpoche is here, and I take a little leap, um, I would talk about the Lamso Namsum. <laughs> so that's kind of gutsy, uh, <laughs> three principal aspects of the path. So I thought, you know, in, in, when uh, talking, it's good to uh, totally be transparent with one's teacher. So you can, they can say, oh, that point you could improve on, or the, you know, that point. Uh, so it's absolutely totally gutsy to, for me to say just even a little few words about uh, Lamsa Namsum. Uh, Lama Sankapa's uh, profound uh, short poem text and only 14 verses on three principal aspects of the path. So um, please, uh, you know, forgive any mistakes. And um, the the burden uh, I'll ask uh, from Rinpoche is, um, uh, Maybe uh, if he stays on, then uh, you can ask him some questions. <laughs> he can clarify. Is that okay, Rinpoche? A few questions. Yeah, good. So um, I'd also like to compare three principal aspects to um, uh, the three higher trainings. So uh, the three higher trainings, uh, the higher training in uh, discipline or ethics, uh, higher training in uh, samadhi, and then the higher training uh, in wisdom, like that. So um, those kind of correspond a little bit to three principal aspects, you know. So uh, I, I wanted to emphasize those and uh, also correspond to uh, view meditation, action, and conduct. <clears throat> so quite simply, um, in the West, most of us uh, began meditation um, because we needed to clarify our minds. Um, but uh, in the West, it hasn't been so much emphasized at first uh, how to form the right foundation to do that. And uh, the correct foundation actually starts with uh, developing a deep sense of uh, values, a deep sense of ethics which in this case means developing real renunciation, uh, real uh, interest in, in leaving harmful states of mind, leaving, uh, uh, hurting ourselves and hurling others. So uh, developing, uh, you know, what's called a definite emergence. Um, my Tibetan's really weak, but uh, something like a uh, nejung, like that, right? So. Uh, we want to develop the real heartfelt uh, desire to uh, not harm ourselves and not harm others. And that means we're taking uh, a totally ethical, value-based approach to life. 
Um, I'm delighted that the present Dalai Lama, when he speaks, he always comes back to, uh, you know, saying what we all can universally agree on is uh, having a value-based life, having uh, an ethical life, having a non-harming life. So as we do our meditation practice and we do our dharma, uh, it's based on, particularly in these times, on developing a strong sense of renunciation. We want to stop looking for uh, happiness in uh, impermanent, contaminated um, phenomena. And we don't want to look at, you know, pure uh, permanent phenomena. So that's why we take refuge like that. Uh, many people disagree uh, about, uh, you know, different uh, ethical things, particularly in America. Uh, and many Buddhists disagree uh, or debate about uh, tenants. You know, we've been uh, studying tenants um, through the Buddha Dharma study program. And uh, there can be like really different approaches towards uh, wisdom, mind, nature, reality, like that, right? Um, but uh, when it comes to ethics, I'm very happy that in, in Dharma, you know, we have a uh, really very universal uh, understanding and knowing that it starts with uh, renouncing and not wanting to harm like that, not wanting to harm others, not wanting to harm ourselves. Even when I talk to people in California that aren't Dharma people, um, that uh, might be on the um, other side of the uh, political <laughs> spectrum, so to speak, um, uh, because I'm a therapist, uh, I generally say, well, you might not agree on certain uh, political principles or even on certain things, but can it, for example, ever be possible that, uh, you know, child abuse could ever be good, right? Could it ever be possible? Could we ever say it would be, you know, helpful? Could we ever say, oh, that's, that would be good. There, good will come from that. I don't think anybody really can ever say that, right? For young children, babies, any form of abuse we don't want to do. We want to really uh, be nurturing and really be helpful, right? There's, there's no way we can say, okay, that's helpful. So uh, this is important because I want to establish uh, my uh, argument by saying there are some real um, ethical, uh, uh, ethics isn't just situational, right? There could never, could there ever be a situation where that would be good? Think about it. And maybe there are others where there could never be a situation where doing a certain kind of harm could ever be good. So uh, we know that uh, the Dharma actually uh, has to be based in this uh, ethical non-harming. Um, so uh, I'd like to read a few passages. Uh, it's very traditional um, in our uh, Gilluk lineage to cite our sources. So you don't think I'm just totally making it up, okay? <laughs> so um, <clears throat> this uh, uh, wonderful text by Lama Sankapa, uh, Jay Sankapa starts, homage to the precious noble masters, the very essence of all the Buddhist teachings, the path that is praised by the noble bodhisattvas and the entrance for all fortunate ones during liberation, desiring liberation to the best of my ability, I will now set forth. You who are unattached to samsara's pleasures and strive to make full use of the freedoms and advantages, you who follow the path delighting all the Buddhas, fortunate ones, listen well with a clear and open mind. Whilst lacking pure renunciation, there is no way to pacify the continual thirst for pleasure in the ocean of samsara. And since all living beings are bound by their craving for existence, you must begin by, by finding the determination to be free. The freedoms and advantages are rare and there's no time to waste. Reflect on this again and yet again and dispel attachment to this life. To dispel attachments to your future lives, contemplate repeatedly the unfailing effects of karma 
and the sufferings of samsara. When through growing accustomed to thinking in this way, hope for the pleasures of samsara no longer rises even for an instant, and then throughout both day and night, you long for liberation, then at time, true enunciation has been born. So here within the text, um, he goes over what is sometimes uh, uh, recited separately called the four contemplations that turn mind to Dharma. So reflecting on precious human life, reflecting on impermanence, reflecting on cause and effect in karma, and reflecting on, uh, you know, as long, everywhere in samsara actually sucks. There's no good place, not even on the beach in Mendocino, right? So uh, I'd like to say when people are struggling with their practice or stop practicing, stop doing any of the three higher trainings, you've forgotten to do, you've forgotten the, uh, the four contemplations. Think about it, right? When, when we're, our practice lapses, when we're not uh, meditating, we're not studying, we're not attending service, uh, we're forgetting one of, one of these realities, right? We're forgetting uh, that now we have a precious human body, we can hear Dharma, we're forgetting that uh, you know, time isn't waiting for us, things are impermanent, we're forgetting cause and effect, that we must create the causes for liberation, they won't happen by themselves. And then we're, we're thinking, oh, if I just win the lottery, I'll be fine. Or if Trump goes away, I'll be fine. <laughs> so, correct? But uh, that will not solve samsara. What do you think? So uh, this uh, developing uh, definite emergence, renunciation, uh, and the ethical words uh, uh, that go with that are important. So uh, I'm. I'm proud to say, and I, I don't say really proudly, actually kind of depressingly, that uh, I believe I'm one of the few American lamas that says, okay, I want everyone taking refuge to uh, follow the five precepts, right? Panchasila, the five precepts. So uh, I don't know which one's the hardest for you. Um, some people say, I, you know, uh, different things. Um, for me, the hardest precept is so is like uh, kind of right speech. Don't you think? It's very difficult. But uh, many times in America, the hardest is, uh, you know, use of intoxicants. So I'm one of the few lamas that says, I really want people to practice this precept to the best of their ability. I just have not found um, uh, that when people are taking refuge, and uh, uh, addictive substances or taking refuge in samsaric uh, pleasures that your, your meditation practice and your realization will blossom. If, if that's happened, if you had a drug experience and you can verify your realization enlightenment with His Holiness Dalai Lama, then I'll change my mind, okay? But until then, like, uh, as best as possible, we're not perfect, but please uh, notice that the precepts are not just for Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, but are actually fundamental to developing our meditation. I don't know how we can have uh, shine, how we can have do shamatha, calm abiding meditation while uh, our head is swirling. There's enough distractions anyway, but when we're uh, constantly fighting, when we're lying, when we're stealing, when we're doing sexual misconduct and intoxicant, is it is it really possible? So I'm a testimony. While while I was doing these things, I thought I thought, well, I can become a good practitioner and uh, meditate, receive some realizations and insights, and then the precepts will naturally happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. Okay, it doesn't happen. But we think we think that way. Maybe I was just being child of the '60s thinking like I'll have some kind of blowout experience and then the precepts and having ethical life will be easy. Uh, I, I don't think it's ever easy. So I've been fortunate to have wonderful teachers uh, who have said that they have to constantly practice, you know, mindfulness speech, 
particularly mindfulness of mind, mindfulness of their mental states, you know, so that they uh, maintain precepts. It's enormously difficult, isn't it? <laughs> particularly every morning I have to say, okay, I'm going in to either lines or the office. I don't want to get mad today. Does anybody else do that? If you do that, raise your hand. You can say, I'm just take a slide. Yeah, I just have to. Okay, I'm really not going to get angry today. So uh, that constant sense of uh, developing the strong foundation and the values uh, and the individual liberation uh, is essential like that. But of course, uh, we don't stop there. The uh, second part, of course, is developing uh, uh, bodhicitta, right? Developing uh, the wish to become uh, a Buddha, to free all mother sentient beings, and the fact that we can't bear to see others suffer. So, uh, actually, I equate this with uh, a meditation like that, the higher trainings in samadhi, uh, interestingly, because uh, when your mind is and the heart suffused with bodhicitta, uh, it's very, very easy to, um, or easier to uh, attain uh, the shamatha and work through the levels of the shamatha. Uh, don't you think? Uh, this could be a question or discussion later. When we're um, preoccupied with our own problems, then it's very difficult to attain shine, uh, calm abiding. But uh, when we develop uh, bodhicitta, there's uh, immense amount of energy and peace that comes over us, and the mind becomes uh, very focused, uh, very balanced, uh, and very delighted in uh, keeping uh, our meditation object in front of us, don't you think? So let's read from uh, Lama Sankhapa. Mm. So uh, verse six, can you still hear me okay? Okay. Yet if this renunciation is not embraced by the pure motivation of bodhicitta, it will not become a cause for the perfect bliss of unsurpassed awakening. So the wise should generate supreme bodhicitta. Beings are swept along by the powerful current of the four rivers, tightly bound by the chains of their karma, so difficult to undo ensnared within the iron trap of their self-grasping and enshrouded in the thick darkness of ignorance. And yet, again, they are reborn in limitless samsara and constantly tormented by the three forms of suffering. This is the current condition of all your mothers from previous lives. Contemplate their plight and generate supreme bodhicitta. So, uh, someone can uh, remind me, I'd like to, this coming year, or maybe even December, give a talk on the seven uh, cause and effect meditations to generate bodhicitta. Some of you may already know that, where we develop bodhicitta through remembering the kindness, all beings uh, being our mothers. So if you lack, uh, so <clears throat> if you lack this uh, bodhicitta, then um, Lama Sankhaba is saying, uh, you will not be able to generate the profound Buddha mind. But I would like to also say in our tradition, um, you know, the, generating the bodhicitta has a direct influence on uh, developing uh, shine, developing samadhi, developing dhyana, paramita. Uh, because then the, uh, our motivation is based on the ethics and our motivation is based on wanting to uh, uh, help others, and our, we become very stable like that. Very stable, becomes very joyful to meditate. It becomes like we, we want to meditate. It feels like uh, 24 minutes that I've asked people to do at least once a day, then, then we think, oh, that went really fast, yeah? So when we're self-preoccupied, when we're thinking, oh, my problem, my my pain only, when we're uh, thinking revenge, <laughs> we're thinking about, okay, I can't wait till he leaves office, then we're not uh, having uh, shine, we're not having calm abiding. So uh, usually um, meditation is just promoted as a technique, right? 
concentration technique, but in our uh, Mahayana uh, traditions, we say you add the bodhicitta and it's supercharged, okay? So uh, most of us here, you know, most of us talking are um, householder yogis, is that right? Um, and uh, we haven't had the time or the good karma to go on long retreat or uh, take monastic vows. So uh, how do we do it? And people say, I don't know, you know, I don't think I have time. But uh, when we add bodhicitta, it's, it's totally supercharged, it's totally uh, uh, turbocharged our practice. That's how we do it. Yeah, of course we need to go on retreat, that we all need to do long retreats. We should do long retreats at least. Um, I've done many, but uh, I want to do more. <laughs> But uh, what uh, enables us to do the practices uh, and then eventually do Tantra is the bodhicitta. So uh, we must absolutely have that. And I'm happy that the people of Lion Sura Sangha, Donadargi Temple, uh, you know, people are very giving and loving and have that bodhisattva motivation. That's how we do it. Isn't that so? So we can have discussion. Then finally, um, it's developing the higher uh, wisdom and uh, the third aspect, principal aspect, uh, I'd like to read from Lama Sankapa. So, <clears throat> if you lack the wisdom that realizes the nature of things, although you might grow accustomed to renunciation and bodhicitta, you will be incapable of cutting through conditioned existence at its root. Exert yourself, therefore, in the methods for realizing interdependence. The one who sees that cause and effect operate infallibly for all the phenomena of samsara and nirvana, and for whom any objects of conceptual focus have subsided, has set out upon the path, delighting all the Buddhas. The knowledge that appearances arise unfailingly on dependence, and the knowledge that they are empty and beyond all assertions, as long as these two appear as separate, there can be no realization of the Buddha's wisdom. Yet, when they arise at once, not each in turn, but both together, then through merely seeing unfailing dependent origination, certainty is born, and all modes of misapprehension fall apart. That is when discernment of the view has reached perfection. When you know that appearance dispels the extreme of existence, while the extreme of nothingness is eliminated by emptiness. And you also come to know how emptiness arises as cause and effect, then you will be immune to any view entailing clinging to extremes. This is the verse I want to go over a little bit. This is a little tricky, you know. But last, when in this way you have correctly understood the key points of the three principal aspects of the path, Withdraw to solitude, dear son. Uh, and I'm going to add in parentheses add a little bit to Jay Roger, dear daughter, okay? <laughs> Strengthen your diligence and swiftly accomplish the ultimate and lasting aim. Like that. So, um, so this was uh, like uh, coming immediately uh, from Lama Sankapa's uh, realization experience to. Uh, you know, his close student who was there at the time. So that's why he said, dear son. But if some Sangha members were there, I'm sure he would have said, dear sons and daughters too. What do you think? <laughs> so uh, it's uh, the verse I'd like to repeat again um, that's really important is this one. When you know that appearances dispel the extreme of existence while the extreme of nothingness is eliminated by emptiness. And you also come to know that emptiness arises as cause and effect, then you will be immune to any view entailing clinging to extremes. So this is a profound verse that I, I can't say we have time or I'm not claiming uh, supreme realization in, but just to say a little bit. And normally um, we say that the fact that things uh, appear eliminates uh, nihilism 
or the non-existence of things, right? Normally we'd say that. And then normally we'd say that, you know, emptiness uh, eliminates eternalism, right? You, you have been reading tenets, right? Nod your head, say, normally, like that sounds like, you know, normally. But uh, Lama Sankaba is really interesting here, you know, it says um, mm -hmm. the fact that things appear themselves uh, take away uh, the extreme of uh, uh, being truly existence. That's interesting, right? The fact that they actually appear shows the lack of true existence. And uh, because uh, if we really read closely, for things to appear, they must lack inherent existence. That's interesting, isn't it? So um, then the fact that things are empty, emptiness means uh, that eliminates non-existence. How so? Because only uh, that things are empty, that the, uh, be, only because things are empty can they appear like that, you see? So, uh, uh, you know, interesting part is like Lama Sankaba kind of turns it on its head that uh, uh, usually we think, oh, uh, you know, things appear, so that means, uh, you know, we've eliminated eternalism and things are empty, uh, or they appear eliminated nihilism, things are empty, so eliminated um, uh, eternalism, but uh, he turns it on its head. The fact that things uh, appear uh, show emptiness, the things that are empty, they show that how things can appear like that. So um, this is quite profound, you know, and uh, uh, I don't want to, you know, claim uh, any realization with this, but um, uh, I, I want people uh, to delve into this, uh, you know, 13th verse. Maybe we can discuss it in more detail uh, because uh, it's, it's completely different the way we normally think, even after reading Dharma. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, I'd like to say, you know, view, meditation, action. For me, uh, the view is normally we say the view of uh, highest view, but I'd like to equate view with having correct values, right? So when we say view, I want you to think values and real uh, renunciation and refuge and meditation developing uh, not just developing shine, shamatha, uh, and vipassana with uh, bodhicitta, with uh, the bodhisattva vow, and the action with uh, the right conduct. So how do we actually live our lives like that? So uh, one of the things I'm trying to do here, Lion's Roar, is uh, just be totally transparent. Uh, so you can see, uh, and you can be open to uh, uh, questions. Um, like Lamala, why do you say this? And you're act, acting like this at the office, or you're acting like that at temple, or acting like that at home, or when you, you know. So I'm very interested in just uh, totally living transparent lives. Sometimes it hurts when I receive criticism, but I need them, right? So I welcome that, you know, like, oh, why do you do that, you know? So I'm not trying to be different. Uh, as Lama or therapist or friend or husband or, or anything, just uh, that's my goal, like totally transparent like that. So um, I would like to um, stop now so uh, we can have uh, questions, uh, comments and complaints. Um, uh, thank you for your attention, you know, particularly Rav Shea, I think it's, um, you know, uh, difficult to hear my meanderings, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you know, so I think I, if uh, uh, you reminded like to turn on your mic or so uh, myself or Rimshe can hear you, then uh, that would be really great. Uh, so particularly I wanted to um, try to model the behavior. So, uh, you know, to, um, you know, give a short talk on uh, Lansa Namsam, uh, very profound. 
actually trying to say something about emptiness, kind of arrogant maybe, but uh, I wanted to be so like totally transparent, you know? So, uh, so please, if you think you have a, a silly question, uh, see that as an opportunity uh, for bodhicitta and uh, for helping others, okay? Yeah, thank you. So <laughs> now we have a little bit of time for some discussion, and uh, this is where we see if people's mics can work, right? <laughs> like that. Maybe uh, Connor can help, you know, call out to people, because sometimes I'm looking at the screen projected on the wall of Midway Health, but I may not be able to see everybody. You can see everyone. Oh, okay. I may not be able to see if they ask a question or have a comment. Yeah. I have a question, actually. Uh, can people hear you? I don't know. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Okay. Uh, so, based on that last verse, um, for things to appear, they must lack true existence. But sort of the corollary of that be that if we were to do a thought experiment, that if something had true existence, it would be actually truly lonely. It wouldn't be able to interact with anything else. Uh, so if, if something had true existence, it would be very like uh, solitary. It wouldn't be able to, um, you know, have any uh, connection. Yeah. Uh, probably, you know, like I'm, I'm interested, I'll, I'll say first, so I expose myself first. I, I would say, uh, Nagarjuna and, uh, Wisdom Karakas, uh, would probably say, you know, that, that must be an impossibility. We can't find it. Right. You know, show me something that, you know, can't interact or, or doesn't, uh, arise, um, along with something else and that's would be an impossibility you know like that it it would be very lonely but that must be how we feel when we're lost in samsara very lonely something like that but uh uh looking at that kind of from madhyamaka point of view uh you know we we couldn't find that we couldn't establish that by by reason or meditation you know like that um but we we should we should search. We have to search for that self that we that feels lonely. I think you know. <clears throat> I don't know. So when I get that question, I I think of uh, Nagarjuna Rinpoche. That's where I go go back to Nagarjuna and Madhyamaka. What do, what do you think? Is that a good idea? He needs to unmute. So. Uh, I hope you can hear me. So Connie was asking, you know, is it possible to find some solitary thing? And uh, if something had its own essence, wouldn't it be solitary and couldn't relate? So I'm saying, yeah, you're agreeing with Nagarjuna on that, like that. <clears throat> so I, d I don't think Rimshe has his, uh, he has to unmute and say hello, so. Uh, can you unmute yourself? So we can hear. We can't hear you yet. Okay. I'm not sure you can. There we go. Yeah. Hi. Uh, okay. Hi. 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 I I didn't get the the uh, the clear. What do you say? What do you ask? Uh, why don't you ask again, Connor? So you come over here. Yeah. We need to like to walk over here. So. Um. If a if a thing had true existence, wouldn't it be very lonely because it wouldn't be able to interact with anything? And Lamala said, well, Nagarjuna probably would say that uh, we wouldn't be able to find it. Um, so I guess maybe there's there's no real point in talking about it, but maybe <laughs> that, that's sort of how we feel in samsara is because we think that we have true existence, then uh, you know we can't interact very well. Um, but maybe the question is, what would Nagarjuna or, or Sankapa say about the the state of having true existence? Yeah, so the uh, talking about the, the how to say um, 
uh, the emptiness or ultimate truth or, or reality, right? Yes, yeah. So like, they have has to have a two two how to call kind of like a kind of like, kind of like a two side mirror how to call. I don't know there yeah. how to say in English. So two two side of coin or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they ha have to be balanced uh, in between the existence and uh, uh, how to say uh, how to call um existing and thing that we perceive is uh, not uh, truly existing. Yeah. So that that uh, we have to be uh, have to have a balance. So uh, if if we if, even we, not talking about the just like us, uh, 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 we are now just beginner, right? Maybe <laughs> very very beginners to uh, the practicing or study about uh, the uh, ultimate reality. So even though those uh, practitioners who already already get some pretty high uh, uh, the levels about the, the ultimate truth, uh, they, 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 they sometimes they how to say, uh, they get some uh, confused or some misunderstanding uh, when they, mm -hmm. they, the, the, how to say, they, when they meditate about the, the uh, ultimate truth and the, the how to call it, the, we talk about the two, how to say, two, how to call, I don't know, Teachers. the two, one, truth, yeah. yeah, one is it, it losing the uh, the uh, functions, yeah, and one is the the how to say not seeing the exact the the um, uh, reality, right? So even though the some uh, practitioner when they uh, meditate or when they uh, analyze toward the, the object, and when they the uh, go more toward to the 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 how say reality or something. Uh, uh, one side uh, they they losing the functionality, and so when they uh, focus on the functionality, and then they didn't uh, how to able to differentiate the the how to say the the APA and uh, uh, reality. So, so when we talk about that, the three principles, right? Three principles. So one, one part is uh, right view, which is talking about the, the uh, ultimate truth. So, so for my my personal right uh, experience or my personal view is. So they, they, this uh, topic or subject is huge. It's very, very deep and very wide, and they have a how to say uh, many, many uh, how it's called concept or the uh, commentary and different four different school inside that different school have a different thought or something. So uh, what when I heard you guys already had the attended uh, study, that's a very, very good to understand emptiness or ultimate truth. So each school, they have their thought about the ultimate truth. So when you uh, study uh, each of them, like a beginning from what's called the Chetakmawa, right? First school, the Chetakmawa, and then the Dodeba, and then the Samsamba, and then the uh, Umapa. Then in, inside Umapa, they have a two different. So when you study careful, each of schools is getting better and better and better understanding uh, about the the, uh, the person kicker's uh, ultimate truth uh, view. And in, if you able to add the loric, loric, uh, yeah. mind, mind function, right? If you study uh, mind functions and uh, uh, plus the tenets, 
these two combined, you will have a definitely uh, better understanding about the, the two truths, conventional truth and the, the ultimate truth. Yeah. So if you just uh, sometimes you know that we see some people, even I, I, I uh, the you know even the, some of my family member or relative or some of my. Uh, Tibetan friend or something like they heard many a word right to 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 so some of them uh, how to say misunderstanding or some mis uh, uh, how to call the, they they think they knows <laughs> 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 they think they know so or to 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 oh, okay, this is they can say it from the their uh, voice okay this is that there's something like that but reality so if uh, when we try to meditate or analyze the the topic about uh, conventional things and the ultimate uh, truth it's uh, we uh, i my suggestion is not just go to the how to say very deep uh, understanding so in, in in reality we we can see example like a example like a, okay when we meditate emptiness what's the benefit we have right so sometimes kind of like a, some uh, sometimes uh, even i i had a i had a, the how to say uh, feel felt that in 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 my past what's what's the benefit if i do meditate on the emptiness right? <laughs> in the beginning we uh, when we study uh, the Buddhist philosophy, like a uh, very uh, begin beginning level, uh, when we try to you know even though the, in in Tibetan the uh, community or monastery uh, community, even though you are very young, I, I become a monk at age age. So start from age age, I already received some initiation or something like that. When the Lama says, "Oh, Tongbani the jewels," something. You should uh, think uh, the become a, uh, the emptiness or something like that. So we we, we have no idea. We think about the sky like a empty like a sky <laughs> or something like right, that. Right. So right. so the uh, I I I mean so, so we uh, we how we should uh, analyze beginning right? What's the benefit we have if we try to meditate uh, the uh, emptiness? So when, whatever we do the practice, you know, the some pra practice or some initiations or those, they have a kind of like a, a, the step by step. This, and the example, like a, when we try to meditate the Bodhicitta, right? In in the uh, Shanti, there was that one chapter that's talking about the benefit for the uh, 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 the, uh, the Bodhicitta. So before, whatever how to say practice we do first i think try to understand the benefit of those practice so emptiness is just simple example like example uh, i i i i believe when you have a little bit understanding about about the ultimate truth it will reduce simply reduce your anger when we get the anger, right? We get anger often, <laughs> pretty much daily basics. So, whatever, when we get the ang anger, I think most of times we didn't see the things correctly. Sometimes we project, sometimes we how to say, expect too much or something like that. So, when it's sometimes it's not necessary, we get the anger toward the person or any any being sometimes we get angered at the from the, some object or something like that so uh, whatever we perceive is not the crack so that's how we get the anger so if we have a how to say like a not necessary to how to say arises or awareness all the time but basic in 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 deep in our mind we have we have to have a, some kind of understanding. Okay, whatever I see is not the correct or not the true existence or something like that. If we do have a, some kind of 
foundation uh, the uh, the the in, in giving our mind if we if we have a how does it believe or we understand then it makes big differences so so in 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 the in, in one another one is the uh, i want to add it to you in 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 any community the when we uh, the study or practice about the, the three principle accessor path or lumbering or this many uh, felt this kind of like a common come oh lumbering i already studied lumbering many many years i already studied three principle accessor path many many times i mm -hmm. i know i know i know something many people have felt that when we when we say okay some new group or gathering or something like that uh, three principal aspects of what okay this is i know i know something like that <laughs> but but i think it's very very important any practice any uh, the uh, buddhist practice and uh, particular the the uh, great vehicle or mahayana or vijayana vehicles three principal aspects the path must so it is not uh, when we count the three principal aspects is uh, a small number, right? Denunciation, bodhicitta, right with it's very simple, but you, we uh, we we need to understand the whole lumbering based on those three principles. So they have a three chapter, right? So first two chapters, the uh, the small scopes or the middle scope, those two goes under the, the renunciation and then the 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 how to say uh final chapter or whatever called the uh, the bodhicitta and the right views is the uh, the goes to the the uh, great scope or what's called great scope yeah yeah so so those three principal aspects so if we practice like a, the, uh, the, the Mahayana practitioner, if we consider as the Mahayana practitioner, those three must have. It's very, very important. But, but sometimes we feel like, okay, actual renunciation, very difficult, right? Actual renunciation. So, so just simple, like uh, whatever we don't like, we can renounce very easy, right? <laughs> so 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 in 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 our day-to-day -day lives we we want to have a more happy more pleasure good food sleep well the gym good or something like too too much attached towards it so so how to say exactly how to call like i i'm i have no idea actual renunciation is not easy to develop but we can have a how to say like a, a the improves how to say step by step step by step so so we we have to have a kind of like a i i i just mentioned in deep in our mind we have to have a something understanding about the renunciations the bodhicitta and the right view it makes big difference that's i i i i think that's very important <laughs> so my 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 conversation is not uh, how to say uh, or how to call like a, the oh, not good or how to say the organized, but it, whatever the uh, I I I say it is I mean it. That's right. That's correct. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. okay. Very yeah. clear. <laughs> yeah. uh, we just have a few more minutes, so um, you know, please, if someone uh, has a uh, time, use this sacred time to uh, make comment or ask questions, or mm -hmm. So, okay. I think I have... I... Sasha, I have a question. Did somebody else speak, or after you, then James? Yeah. So, hi, Sasha. Yeah, please. Hi. Thank you, Rinpoche. Um, so just bear with me. I will try to put this together in a coherent sentence. 
Um, so the, the part of the verse that I heard was, <clears throat> emptiness arises as cause and effect. And then once you're aware of this, you will let go of clinging to extremes. And so I think my question is, once you let go of clinging to extremes, what is that point? Is that a point in which distractions then start to, like, let's say, in um, con kind of conventional everyday, like it's not so hard to, let's say you were talking about renunciation, not so hard to let go of something that's difficult to let go of. Um, so you're able to walk the path clearer um, once you realize that these extremes are empty themselves, that they have no meaning. Um, like what, what's the next step after that? I, I hope I'm being clear. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make a response and then I hope Ramshay will, um, respond, you know, uh, uh, you know, earlier he was talking about how, of course, uh, you know, even some little insight into emptiness is going to bring us into balance and reduce the, you know, the uh, emotional swings and reduce some sorrow, right? So uh, most of the path is repeating the truth to ourselves over and over through study and reflection and meditation uh, because the delusions have been repeated over and over, right? So, so much um, of the path is uh, hearing the truth very consistently from both outside and inside. So uh, I, don't, I don't think, uh, sometimes in America we think uh, realization or enlightenment like as some uh, big overhead light that comes on in a stadium, you know? But uh, usually it's more like a flashlight, you know? We have to go, we're holding our flashlight of wisdom and we're going from room to room, you know, noticing, uh, you know, how, how things actually are. So it's an evolving process. You know, uh, some great, incredible uh, people like the Buddha, uh, Padmasambhava, Lama Tsongkhapa, so forth, uh, present uh, Dalai Lama, you know, uh, can see really big views all at once. But uh, we can achieve quite a lot if we're persistent, you see. And we say, okay, I just, my, my realization might not be great. I might just have flashlight, but we can go from room to room with a lot of diligence, you know, that uh, paramita of diligence, Sondru, you know, the, uh, just the right effort, okay? So, um, Sasha, you know, it's like the Buddha uh, spoke of right effort uh, many times. Right effort's part of um, Eightfold Path, right? Right effort. And then also one of the paramitas, right? Virya paramita, diligence, Sondru, like that. And then his last words were, you know, practice with diligence, right? So in someone's last words, you know, like they should be listened to. So three times in three profound ways talking about a right effort. So uh, with continual application, you know, I think uh, uh, we can, uh, you know, light up the whole mansion, don't you think? So I, I'm, I'm interested to see how Rimshe is a very important question, you know, how we uh, work the path and, uh, you know, work with uh, the teachings. So I, uh, I, hope, I hope that was helpful and, and I'm interested if Rimshe has comment. He's very nice, we're putting him on the spot today. He's, he's quite compassionate, so. He's on mute. Oh, Rebisha, you're on mute. Yeah, just have to. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Lamala, can you make the, the answer a little bit shorter? The, yes. The so, question, question, uh, question. I'm in question. Uh, <laughs> is, is even a small realization of emptiness useful and can that be broadened? Can that be expanded over time? So, yeah. even, is, even small realization of emptiness. Right, even by reading and study, is that useful? And also, can it be expanded? Yeah, can it yeah. Grow over time. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a, yeah, absolutely. It's a very important to step by step. So if you if you try to uh, go like a how to call it? I don't know the uh, example. Like they have a ten steps. If you like to go uh, how to call escape several steps and to like a fifth step or something, that's not good idea to. Uh, uh, the uh, practice or study the any any practice. So, so as I mentioned before, you know we are beginner a beginner. Ex in example, like a, my uh, I'm almost fifty. All my life spent in the monastery, study every day, try to do the practice best as I can. But still, it's not the how to say. Okay. I understood that's it, that's it, or something like that. See, through the knowledge, I might understand maybe pretty good, but we have to put into the practice reality, right? So, so the how to say, I I I sometimes uh, give advice to some uh, other my friends or uh, some uh, some other people. So some they asking me about the, you know the when they do the shadana example like yamantaka shadana right so yamantaka shadana is uh, pretty long and there were many uh, how to say many uh, practice that we need to understand or something like that and beginning I I'm telling them you know that you have to first step is you have to know how to recite where to use the, the those uh the like uh, bells and damarus or how when the you have to use the, the those things then second step is you try to understand just brief like uh, when you, beginning they have a kind of like a preliminary practice so when you recite the preliminary practice you should under you should know or oh, okay now i'm doing this practice this practice this practice not just try to focus totally on the deep if you go like deep then you the yamadaka shadana is not gonna finish whole day <laughs> so kind of like analytical meditation the uh, use to uh, uh, practice the shadana, something like that. So that will, you know, that when you recite, okay, Veja Sattva uh, practice, then the, if you have a more time, you understand uh, the house a little bit deep, deeper, then you can totally, uh, the, how do they try to visualize everything at, at one time. But Sometimes we cannot do that, so we, we just use the analytical meditations. Okay, this is okay, talking about the refugees or then the visualizing the merit field, and then okay, now this is uh, how to say uh, purifying something, something like that. So, so uh, what I mean is whatever you understood from the, your practice or from your teacher or from the, your studies whatever you have a knowledge or understanding try to how to say put on the actual practice that's very important yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah important yeah it's yeah. just uh, the daily um uh taking joy and uh the daily practice as uh one of the most supportive things i can do for people at the temple yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, like we get up and we can do it all again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you, Ramshay. Like, yeah. there's one more question, then we we need to close. And you know, James, he's very good. Puts up hands. So, do you still do you still have a question or comment, James? Mm. Yes, I do. Thank you very much, Lama Jimpa and Kenshin Rinpoche, for this mm. very helpful talk. Much much appreciated. So there was there was a comment that came up about what we like uh, attachment and karma, and what I'm wondering is how do we use contemplations on karma to help motivate us to not follow through on the path of attachment to a pleasurable object or an activity. In other words, how do we motivate ourselves to let go of pleasurable objects by contemplating? karma how do we overcome the stupidity we have 
before we go through the experience of impermanence or disillusionment? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> you know, mm. I, I wanted to say, you know, like one time in the Pali Sutras, uh, Ananda uh, came back from retreat and um, the Buddha said, well, what, what uh, was, what were your experiences and realization on retreat, right? So after retreat, we should meet with our Lama and say, this is what my experience or realization was. And Ananda said, oh, I understand karma now. And the Buddha just threw up his hands and said, no way, you don't. <laughs> it's mm. too complex. So don't say that, you know. But um, we actually have to, you know, it's, it's so important to continually ask the, our question. I think in English we can say, if I do this, what would be the consequences? And think forward more than just one consequence. Try, you know, because uh, usually just, regular time we don't even think of the consequence it just feels good so we do it or it doesn't feel good so we don't do it but do you think like can we think through one co consequence and then the ne that consequence will have maybe at least two consequences so uh you know i remember um uh you know lama zopa from uh uh who taught in Madison, was a friend of my teacher, not, not current Lama, not Lama Zopa of FPMT, but Lama Zopa taught at Madison, Wisconsin, um, uh, in Deer Park. Uh, he, I think he wrote a whole commentary on Lama Chemo just on karma, whole book like that. So uh, really spending time to think about, okay, that would be a consequence. And then what would be that consequence? So that's a very important meditation. Sometimes in retreat, people would spend months and we should always be doing that. But I'm, I'm very interested, very important question uh, for Rimshay too. If you have one more minute, Rimshay, I appreciate it. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Come, come is actually a little bit complicated uh, to topic uh, in general, in particular in I think Western world. <laughs> So, yeah. so in 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 the in Tibetan community, or the the sometimes you know the people say that every uh, how to say everything happens uh, by the karma. So it's I I I uh, I I don't like that concept. <laughs> I I don't believe that everything is uh, how to say kind of like a so it's similar like a create by the gods, right? So, so the karma, you know, that the uh, in 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 when we when we uh, when we look at the the how to say the, uh, karma uh, the uh, the uh, the how to call function karma function, right? So so I think uh, everybody uh, already knew about the uh, the the how to say the uh, twelve. Lingo of dependent origination. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, so main, main cause by the ignorance, right? So, every, so for, for, for us, like a 24 7 creating karma. So, when we, when we have a good motivation, calm mind, and uh, how to say, stable mind. We're creating the good karma. <laughs> when we our motivation is not good, we are not stable, and uh, how to say uh, controlled by the those uh, three poisons, uh, particular uh, attachments or anger, then we are creating some bad karma. So, in simple, simple how to say uh, understanding is when we do something good, it will. How does it give you the good result? If you good, if you do something bad, it will <laughs> give you the something bad results. The near future or in 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 the in, uh, future lives. So, so the the how to say. So more, I I I my understanding is most important is we have to have a, some kind of belief in karma. If if we don't 
have that, then many things go wrong. So how to kind of like a kind of like a how to say uh, our uh, our uh, our uh, kind of like a law, right? Law. <laughs> so in in example like in here like California, so uh, m most of times we follow the law, but not the how to say how to call it, ethical or uh, how to call it, I don't know morale. Yeah, morality. Yeah, morality. Yeah. We didn't follow the something like that. Even the very highest uh, uh, the uh, level of our uh, community, like uh, state or government, the federal government or whatever, something. So always they say, I didn't break any law. They never say, I didn't break, uh, break the ethical or morality or something like that. <laughs> so... So we must have a, some kind of uh, belief in karma. If we do that, if we do have a, that, that kind of uh, the trust or belief in uh, in karma, then always we think, as Lama uh, Lama Jimba mentions, you know that he, we we automatic automatically thinking about the consequences. Okay, if I do this. So what's going what's going to happen or what effect do i have or do other people have or do other center being have so so i think try to uh the try to get that strong belief in karma is very important but I'll, i also mentioned before i don't believe everything is how to say everything how to call it, everything is Created by the karma or something that I don't believe. <laughs> Some sometimes you know that it's kind of like cause and effect makes sense, right? Everything's result get by the some kind of causes that makes sense. But if everything's by the karma, sometimes uh, it confused and in, in logically we can prove it. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> This is a big topic. Well, yeah, cause and effect and karma. We'll come back to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah this is good. <laughs> Thank so you, Rimshe, so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, this, so um, we need to close up, uh, uh, do prayers, and uh, we'll do mix them in English and then in Tibetan. So I was feeling a little not so good this morning. A little. I'm tired, but I'm energized now. Uh, I asked Karen to do some medicine Buddha for me. Are you still there, Karen? So I uh, hope so. So that was uh, very helpful. Yes. yes, I'm here, Lama. Yeah, so I'm doing better now. So thank you. Thank you for Good. doing practice for okay. me. Okay. Good, Lama. Very, very helpful. And it's very helpful to have uh, Rinpoche here, a big inspiration and all the attendees. So um, that with that kind of motivation, inspiration, and then we do uh, our dedication prayers. So uh, can uh, can we all invite Kenshin Rinpoche to visit online uh, again, visit in person when it's safe? So can we all make aspiration for that? So mm -hmm. thank you so much. That's yeah, fantastic. Uh, Dharma friendship is the best, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. the best, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, Dirk, do you have, can you put up the prayers? Are they showing? Uh, the Prajna Paramita is showing, so now you gotta like. Okay, no, I just wanna make sure that they were showing oh, at yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezi, Tenzin Jatso, Please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness 
and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Losan, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manju Shri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Losangrakpa, I make request at your holy feet. I'm sorry, I've lost it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rumi. Thank, Thank you. Enjoy the day. Talk to you all soon. Ciao. Thank Ciao, you. Bella. Yeah. <laughs> andiamo. Andiamo. <laughs> That's what they say at Instituto Sangapa in Italy. Andiamo. Let's go. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll say goodbye. Thanks, everyone, for coming. So that's good. Stay healthy, please. Okay. Stay healthy. Okay. So we can say goodbye. Yeah, good.